In this video, we will learn to calculate the margin of error given the sample size. A population is a total group that you want to know something about. For example, um, if I want to know the opinion of every single student at Roswell High School, then every single student at Roswell High School is my population. Now, imagine that that population is 2,000. Let's say I want to know what these 2,000 students think about a new bell schedule. Now, I could ask every single one of those 2,000 students, but that would take a long time, and nobody got time for that. So instead, what I will do is I will pick a sample of students. Um, let's say it's 200 students. Now I'm hoping that when I ask those 200 students and um, whatever percentage of them say they like the new bell schedule, um, let's say that 70 percent of them say, yep, I like the new bell schedule. All right, so the sample says you know, 70% approval. I'm hoping that if I asked every single student in the population, all 2,000, that that would also turn out to be 70%. Um, in other words, I'm hoping that the um, sample well represents the population so that the percentage of um, students that feel a certain way in the sample will match the percentage of students that feel a certain way in the population. Now the reality is um, there, there's going to be some difference in between these two numbers usually. Um, the more difference there is the more bias you're looking at. But um, here's where margin of error comes in. When you're dealing with a sample and they give you an answer. 70% of them approve. The margin of error tells you, okay, what about the real population? Are they going to be 70% approval if I really asked every student? And the truth will be, well, give or take a certain number. And um, that give or take is called the margin of error. Um, so let's say you know, sometimes they'll say, all right, 70%, you know, give or take 2%. So that would mean somewhere between 72% and 68%. Now, here's how you calculate that number. It's pretty simple, actually. Um, the margin of error is going to be plus or minus 1 over the square root of the sample size. N is the sample size. And in this case, my sample size was 200. So if I do 1 over the square root of 200, that's going to give me the margin of error. So let's put that in the calculator. All right, so we're going to do 1 over the square root of 200. OK, let's make that into a decimal. All right, so this is the decimal version, but we want a percent. So I'm going to move this decimal two times over to the right. So it's going to end up here, and that's going to be um, 7 point, now let's round it to 7.1. Okay, so that's going to give me um, plus or minus 7.1%. Now here's what that means. Exactly 70% of my sample approved of the new bell schedule. But the margin of error tells me that if I actually asked every single student in the population what they thought and uh, calculated the percent who approved of the bell schedule, um, the true answer for the entire population is going to be 70%, give or take, plus or minus. 7.1 percent. In other words, the true answer is going to be somewhere between 
let's see, um, if we do 70 minus 7.1, All right, that's 62.9%. And uh, of course, 70 plus 7.1 is 77.1%. Um, All right, so in other words, the actual percentage of students at Roswell High School who approve of the new Bell schedule is between 62.9% and 77.1%. Okay, that's what margin of error means. Our sample, remember, our sample of 200 kids came up with 70%. The true population of all 2,000 kids is not, we don't know that that'll be exactly 70%, but we can be pretty sure, we can be very sure that it's somewhere between 70% plus or minus the margin of error. We can be very sure that the actual percentage of all the students, all 2,000, who approve is between 62.9% and 77.1%. Okay, so that's what margin of error does for you. All right, the calculation part is really easy. The, the tougher part was understanding what it all means. So um, let's calculate a few problems and just practice just um, calculating margin of error. Well, again, the margin of error is going to be plus or minus 1 over the square root of the sample size, so 225. So I'm just going to put this in the calculator. Well, 1 over the square root of 225 is 1 15th. Toggle it, you get this. Um, so, as a percent, I have to move the decimal twice. So that's going to be 6.7%. Uh, I've got to round up. All right, they said nearest tenth of a percent. That's why I'm going one decimal place. Similarly, number two, the margin of error is going to be plus or minus one over the square root of 625. All right, move the decimal point twice, that's 4%. So plus or minus 4%. Okay, looking at number 3. The margin of error will be plus or minus 1 over the square root of 4,200. Okay, move the decimal point twice. That's 1.5%. And look at number four, plus or minus one over the square root of 390. Move the decimal point twice, that's 5.1%, got to round up. And that's how you calculate the margin of error.